Hey guys, welcome to my 100th reading vlog. So that is 100 vlogs in a row and I know that some of you guys are expecting me to do something a little bit special this week. Honestly, I have literally zero ideas and I know that 100 vlogs is a big milestone but the milestone that I'm looking forward to is vlog number 104 because that is going to mean two whole years of vlogging. So can't lie, still don't have anything planned out for that. I'm hoping that I'm just gonna be able to pull something out of my ass last minute because I do want to celebrate this milestone. I mean, fuck, it's two whole years two whole years that I have made a vlog every single week and that is seriously intense. So I'm gonna see if I can think of something special for vlog 104. I do have a side project that's going to come outside of the vlog, but we'll see if we can bring you something a little bit more exciting during week 104. But unfortunately this week, I got absolutely nothing guys. I've just done a candle restock. I'm trying to get to the end of my June TBR and lockdown is still kind of in place. I don't think it's lifted until, I think it's the 4th of July when things get a little bit more relaxed. But still, there's not gonna be a whole lot for me to do. It's, it's probably just gonna be a standard vlog this week because I literally have nothing. So currently reading, I actually have not read very much today. I'm on page, this says I'm on page four, but I think I'm on page like 15 of The Start of Me and You by Emery Lord. So I can't really tell you anything about it aside from the basic plot of this at this moment. So this is a young adult contemporary that was gifted to me around three years ago by my friend Ryan, who gifted me a box of just random books that he knew I didn't have and that people were talking about at the time. So so I used to read quite a bit of young adult contemporary. I don't really anymore. And so I did include this in a video called These Books Will Self-Destruct in 12 Months, where if I have not read that stack of books in a 12 month period, I'm going to have to unhaul them. So I'm glad that I'm getting to this book because of that video, because this means at least I'll know for sure whether to unhaul it or not. Although to be honest, the likelihood of me holding on to a standard young adult contemporary is extremely slim anyway. So what I know about this one is that we follow a girl called Paige and one year ago, her boyfriend died in a swimming accident. He drowned. Paige's life was derailed by this. She wasn't with him for very long. However, she still has to field plenty of people, no matter where she goes, who ask how she is. You know that fake sympathy, like I've had it since my mum died, where people don't really care. They just feel like they should ask. And as somebody who is grieving or is past grieving, it does get a little bit annoying. So Paige is now trying to get back into her life, make new connections with people and actually start to live again. So she makes a list, which is a plan of action and how she's going to accomplish this. One of the things on her list is to get closer to her crush. And from the synopsis, I believe that she actually gets closer to her crush's sweet but nerdy cousin, who I'm assuming is going to teach her to live again a little bit. I mean, this book is called The Start of Me and You, so I feel like it pretty much gives it away and this is just going to be about how those two grow closer. But yeah, I'm like 15 pages into it and I need to finish it by tomorrow, so fuck my life pretty much. Aside from that, I also need to read The Father's Show by Ursula K. Le Guin this week because the live show for Le Guin Along is on Saturday and I haven't read that yet. It's only around 150 pages, but I do find the books in that series extremely slow moving. So I may try and read a couple of chapters a day to ease it off a little bit so I don't have to cram the entire thing into Friday because if I have to do that, I'm going to be very upset. But we'll see how I get on with that because it is currently 1am 
and tomorrow I have to pack candle orders and I also have to edit the second half of last week's vlog to go up tomorrow. But aside from all of that, I'm doing pretty good. I'm in a good mood. I actually had a weekend at the weekend, so I'm feeling kind of rejuvenated. I'm feeling fresh. I have two epic video projects that I've taken on. One isn't an epic video project. The making of the video is kind of time consuming and the other one is an epic video project because the editing of the video is going to be a little bitch. But I'm excited to get on with these projects. Kind of annoyed that I have to make other videos when I just want to be working on these. But I'm really excited about those projects. I'm feeling inspired. I have so many video ideas. I just want to read. Making candles is therapeutic. I have clear skin. My crops are watered and life is good. And on that note, I'm going to go to bed. I'm gonna try and get some reading done. Where, where's my book? I'm gonna try and get some reading done of the start of Me and You so that I'm not behind on my July TBR. And I'm gonna get myself some sleep. So I'm just about to go and take my makeup off and then work out and shower. So I thought that I would bring you guys a bit of a check-in before I do that because I've actually read quite a bit of the start of Me and You by Emery Lord today. Before I tell you about the book, I'm just really annoyed at myself because it is the 1st of July, okay? So I did not manage to fit this into June. I've already filmed my wrap up so I can't even finish it tonight and then add it in but the annoying thing about this is that I've just sat and read for less than an hour and I've read almost 100 pages so if I'd have actually bothered to sit down and take the time to read this then it would have been done by now but yeah it took me two days to read 90 pages and then I'm now on page 218 so I read 130 pages today and I've read for maybe an hour and a half in total so this is a young adult contemporary it is quite a basic one. It does deal with some heavier issues but nothing too heavy. We follow a main character called Paige and last summer her boyfriend drowned. So Paige has been having recurring nightmares of drowning and since her boyfriend died she has been struggling to live her life again so she makes this plan which I believe I told you on Monday when I told you about this book but she makes a plan to be happy again and actually start to live her life. Now she has a crush on this guy called Ryan Chase and she thinks he's amazing and cute and everything like that. So she is trying to get close to him but while she's doing that she also becomes close to his cousin Max. Now his cousin is nothing like Ryan Chase. He's very nerdy, he reads a lot of books, he's on a quiz team and one of the things on Paige's plan is to get back into extracurricular activities and things like that. So she does join the quiz team with him. While this is all going on Paige's parents are reconnecting after a divorce and Paige feels very strange about this. She's very pessimistic and she doesn't believe that it can last and she wants to know why her parents are doing this just to cause themselves more heartache. As well as that, the person that Paige is closest to in her life is her grandmother and her grandmother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's a little over a year ago so she's struggling a lot with short-term memory and some things happen throughout the course of this book with her grandmother as well. So it does deal with slightly heavier topics but it's nothing like super dark or anything like that. I'm actually enjoying this. I mean, the thing with me and Young Adult Contemporary is do I ever want to pick up a standard Young Adult Contemporary? Temporary. Absolutely not. Have no interest in them anymore. I do still own a few because my book collection is now nine years old I want to say something like that. I think I started collecting books somewhere around the age of 18. I had a few through my childhood but I did use the library a lot but I know the entire time that I've been in university I have been collecting books and I left them all at my mum and dad's house while I was off at uni and stuff and then I moved back home after uni and continued to collect books because that was a time when I finally had the space for them because we lived in a much smaller house when I was a kid. So I do still have a few on my shelves from when I was interested in them five years ago and previous and I do want to make my way through them. I do fully intend to unhaul them when I'm done with them but there are still a few on my shelves. I rarely ever buy new young adult contemporary. It is just the ones that I've had for a number of years. So do I ever really want to pick them up? No. Do I like them when I actually read them? Yes. They're such easy reads. This is super easy to read. As I said, I've read a whole ton today in spite of not really dedicating any time to reading. I am interested in the plot. Have to admit, it does make my eyes roll a little bit, but that is purely because I'm 27 and being in the mind of a 17 year old girl is not really too relatable to me anymore. Although all of the things that are going on that Paige is doing that I'm rolling my eyes at, I take a moment and I think, is this realistic to what I was doing? 17 and it absolutely 100% is unfortunately I'm ashamed to admit it but the things that Paige is thinking the way that she is inadvertently growing closer to Ryan's cousin while trying to get close to Ryan would I have done that at 17? 
absolutely fucking yeah so i can't be all judgy about it i can't get all up on my high horse like this is ridiculous why are you behaving like this because it is standard typical teenage behavior so that is pretty much it that's pretty much my thoughts on this the thing with me and contemporary as well these days is that i generally just don't have too much to say about them but so far it is a really easy read it has the standard young adult contemporary romance plotline in here as well as the main character dealing with some other more difficult stuff in her life so yeah so far so good i have a 160 pages left of this and then there is a little bit at the end which is a series of correspondence I think emails between two of the characters during summer so less than 200 pages left of this in total I may finish it tonight I may not I'm hoping that I will be able to but as I mentioned I am about to go and work out then I'm gonna shower because my hair needs washing I put it in a big messy bun and these are the messy buns that I used to have back when I worked in retail because my hair was really long and I couldn't be bothered to style it all the time and I really I like it you know I like it but my hair does need washing which is why it's in this horrifically messy bun and then after that I'm going to play Fortnite for an hour and then get back to reading so fingers crossed I'll have this finished today because regardless tomorrow I do need to start The Father's Show by Ursula K. Le Guin I actually have that book here because the second book was in my wrap up but I need to start the third book in the books of Earthsea because the live show is on Saturday and I have not read that book yet so I'm on a little bit of a time crunch but I will be checking in with you guys maybe later tonight but most likely it will be tomorrow to wrap up my thoughts on this and start this which I'm not looking forward to but once these two are done I can move into my July TBR and I have some books on there that I'm extremely excited to read. So it's like 3 30 a.m and I am here to declare myself as a cynical old witch because I actually ended up really enjoying the start of me and you. I gave it four stars in the end. I got to around the page 300 mark, I wanna say. And you know, in every romance story, whether it's adult, contemporary, new adult, you always get to a point where something happens to shake up the equilibrium of the characters. There's always some sort of conflict. And I, I found myself really rooting for these characters, you know, like I was back in the main character in not only her romantic pursuit but also all of the other things that she was doing and I was upset when things got a little bit angsty and I got swept up in the angst and I just wanted everything to come back together and everything to be okay I ended up really enjoying it I don't have too many thoughts to say on this because young adult contemporary you know not my usual for reviewing and it's it was just a nice story and it made me feel good reading it it did evoke a little bit of emotion from me there was a sad part in this which actually nearly made me cry due to my own personal experiences we also have a little bit of lgbt plus rep in here there is a female female relationship at some point throughout this book but something that i've discovered only just is that this is a series and there is a sequel to this i think it is only a duology i think it's called the map from here to there I'm not sure if i'm going to read that because i enjoyed this i am kind of tempted to read it however i did look at the synopsis and this book is about junior year and the sequel is about senior year of high school and it is about the main character kind of wanting things to stay the same as she is having to plan for her future and go to college interviews and things like that and those stories I don't particularly like because I don't like change myself and as somebody who left high school quite a long time ago I know that life is quite a bit different now than it was then and the majority of those changes are good but not all of them are great you know like you lose contact with people who you were really close to it happens to me quite frequently like I'll wonder like oh I wonder what that person's doing and I wish that I'd stayed friends with that person instead of kind of just drifting off into my own life kind of thing. I'm a very nostalgic person as well as disliking change but yeah I thought that this story was pretty perfect in how it wrapped up. I think that I am happy with leaving it at this one book so I would say it is highly unlikely that I will read the sequel to this but four stars really enjoyed it. If you guys like Young Adult Contemporary then I would recommend that you pick this one up because it gave me the warm and fuzzies. I liked it. So like I said it is 3 30 a.m. I am only up this late to finish that book. I've read 300 40 pages today which is a nice start to the month. I just wish that the 340 pages I've read was in a book that is actually on my July TBR and not something that's carried over from my June TBR. So I'm going to go to bed and get some sleep because I do have my June wrap up to edit tomorrow to also upload tomorrow and I'm going to send out a few candle orders but at some point throughout tomorrow I will be starting The Father's Show by Ursula K. Le Guin. I think it's around 140 pages in this big volume so I'm going to try 
try and read at least half of it tomorrow I want to say and then the other half on Friday and if I have a little bit of time I may start something else alongside it to break it up a little bit but with how long it can take me to read the books of Ursi even though they're short I think the next two days are pretty much just going to be dedicated to reading that. <laughs> I'm just putting this out there into the world that I have less than 20 pages left of The Father Shaw and I am so, so bored. This is seriously a struggle. Like, I just, oh, I've fallen asleep once while trying to finish this book and I don't even have that much to read. I do, why is this happening to me? I finally finished it and honestly, all I can say at this moment is thank fuck for that. So as you already know, I have just finished The Father Shaw by Ursula K. Le Guin. Um, I, it's like 1am now and I'm not even kidding when I say that it has taken me nearly three hours to read 40 pages of this book. I, I don't even want to review it the way I'm feeling right now and I don't even hate it like I don't think that it's necessarily bad so we'll start with the plot I guess the father Shaw is the third book in this enormous tome in this one we are following Ged again and this time he has a companion who is a prince and the prince comes to Ged who is now the archmage of the wizard school and says to him that in distant lands people are forgetting magic there is no magic anymore there's no dragons and so Ged and the prince travel to the father's shore to find the source of this problem find what's going on and try and fix whatever it is that's taking away magic so we'll start with the positives in which I only really have one and that is that there is actually a plot to this. This is just really weird because when I read The Tombs of Atuan, was it last week? I thought that the writing was much improved from the first book. I was enjoying the writing enough but it just didn't have enough plot for me. You know this one has a pretty solid plot. Ged and Aaron are going to find out what happened to magic and that is what they do. There was a lot of sailing in this but it didn't have the overwrought sailing descriptions that the first book had and as far as plots go the plot was fine. The highest rating that I've given this is based on the plot because for a fantasy novel it is a pretty simple plot I would say but the plot is solid and the plot works and I pretty much did not have a problem with that however I just feel like this installment especially was ridiculously overwritten it reminded me a little bit of Gregory Maguire now Gregory Maguire is an author who has amazing concepts that I love he tends to write fairy tale retellings from the perspective of either a villain or a side character but his writing is just so inflated and overwritten I truly feel like that is my issue that I had with the father Shaw. I gave this three stars but it did only just scrape in at three stars and the only reason it got three and not lower is because I do believe that these books have some merit. Ursula K. Le Guin is known for pushing boundaries for the time that she was writing in. So an example of this is that the main character throughout this series Ged is dark skinned which is something that would be unheard of in the 1960s. So in every book she tends to challenge something. In the father Shaw, the thing that she's introduced into the story that is not the norm is the of drug usage and slavery which recreational drug use was only really emerging into society in the 60s and 70s so I do like that she does that I do acknowledge that I do appreciate that it's just her books are so there's like a tiny fly in front of me go away her books are just so so tiresome to read this book was only 148 pages I struggled to manage 70 pages per day but I'm glad that I persevered and pushed through and managed to read this over a two-day period because if it had taken me any longer I seriously may have deleted my channel and just ghosted on you guys because I just I don't know because slow fantasy coming-of-age fantasy extremely descriptive fantasy I have absolutely no issue with 
with. Elements of the Earthsea cycle do remind me a little bit of the Farsia trilogy by Robin Hobb, which is another fantasy series I'm currently reading. However, Robin Hobb is immersive and I really like her characters. I feel like one of the reasons that I just really don't care about the Earthsea books is because I'm just not attached to the characters at all. The writing feels very impersonal and very removed from the characters. It definitely feels like a more this is what is happening and this is what this looks like and doesn't really dwell too much on what the characters are actually feeling. Ged, I followed him for two whole stories now and he is also present in the second book. Literally just, I don't care about him. I, yeah, just no feelings, forget it all. So that concludes my review of that three stars. I have the live show for that tomorrow, which is going to be fun because I don't think a single one of the hosts liked it. However, there was a positive of today overall, and that is that I watched Hamilton, which has just been released on Disney+. Plus. It was like two hours and 40 minutes, and honestly, one of if not the best musical that I've ever watched and it is about the one of the founding fathers of America. As somebody who is British so doesn't really know anything about American politics and has very little interest in it, I'm surprised at how much I actually enjoyed it. I thought that everybody on Twitter who just like stands Hamilton to death were overreacting a little bit. I just didn't understand how the plot could be interesting but honestly that musical absolutely slaps and I really enjoyed it and I cried at three separate places throughout it. So if you haven't watched Hamilton then maybe give it a watch. I do like musicals in general and if there are recorded ones then I do tend to watch them but I just needed to see what the hype was about with Hamilton because people really really do love it so I'm glad that I watched that. Really enjoyed it. My issue with wanting to watch it before is that I don't love rap music so when people say that the soundtrack's really good I tried listening to it in the past. Noticed that a lot of it was rap and kind of never went back to it but with the visuals of the actual story playing out in front of you I think it really works and I actually really fucking loved it. So that was my day. The only other thing that I've done today is pack some candle orders and then make some candles as well. For the next book that I'm picking up, I absolutely have no idea right now. So I think I'm going to go to bed and I'm going to go and get some sleep and then I will come back tomorrow when I've decided what I'm going to pick up and let you guys know because I, I really don't know right now. I have six books on my July TBR. Oh, I can start my July TBR, which is great because we're already three days into July. So I have six books on my July TBR. Two of them are Buddy Reads which I have scheduled out the weeks that I'm going to be reading those and one is Assassin's Quest for Elder Ling Long and then I have three other books to pick from that I can read at any time. So I don't really have a preference I don't think which one I go with now. So I'll see what I feel like in the morning. I want to film at least two possibly more than two videos tomorrow and get one of them edited before the Lug Win Along live show but whenever I get around to read reading and decide what I'm picking up, I will let you guys know. Hey, it's like 5am. I'm just checking in to say that I've just got out of the post live show call for the Gwyn Along with Cody, Jade and Ashley and it's 5am again. Why do I do this to myself? Why do I do it? I literally thought tonight I was like, oh, I'll just stay on till midnight and then it was, I'll just stay on till two and now it's five in the morning. So I haven't read a book yet. I haven't started a book either so I can't even tell you about that. Don't even know why I'm vlogging right now because I should go to bed and I'm gonna go to bed in a minute but yeah every single time we just can't shut the fuck up but I'm going to be back in the morning and I will let you know what book that I eventually pick up I say in the morning it's already the morning so it will be the afternoon actually should we just pick one now I mean why the fuck not at least I've got makeup on so I think the one that we're gonna go with is let's use this natural daylight shall we I'm gonna be going with Children of the Whales volume 5 by Abby Umida this is on my Bacopoli TBR to read a graphic novel or a manga and it is volume 5 as you can imagine because I just said that and it is a fantasy story about a 14, is he 14? Year old boy called Shakaro on something called the Mud Whale, which is an island that floats along on the Sea of Sand. And the people on the Mud Whale think that they are the only humans to ever exist. And one day the island passes another island and they go to scout it out for supplies as usual and they find another human which blows open their world. So I'm going to be reading this tomorrow. I've selected this because I can read the entire thing tomorrow and take my first book off my July TBR. So yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go get some sleep and then when I wake up I need to make my thumbnail for tomorrow's video, read Children of the Whales Volume 5 and I may do some vlog editing as well. This vlog, this vlog here, I'll be editing you tomorrow. And on that note, I'm gonna get some sleep. So good night, good morning, farewell. Step out, step out of the sun if you keep getting burnt. Step out, step out of the sun because you've learned. Because you've learned. I'm always looking in, will I 
ever be more than I've always been Cause I'm tap tap tapping on the glass I'm waving through a window I'm waving through a window Hey guys, so it is Sunday Ooh, what am I doing? It's Sunday evening now, it's like 8 p.m. And I have just finished Children of the Worlds Volume 5 by Abby Umida. So I gave this one five stars. I did really enjoy this volume. The most fascinating thing about this series to me is kind of the outside world and how these people have gotten onto the mud whale and why they're there. There is a magic system in here. We have marked and unmarked people. The marked people have a magic power called thymia that is controlled by emotion and if you live on the mud whale and you're marked it means that you have a very short lifespan and you die not long after the age of 30 and if you're unmarked you're kind of like a normal human so the unmarked people make up the like, government or the committee of elders on the mud whale and the marked people use their abilities to help out the community so we have a lot of mystery elements in here because like the people of the mud whale don't know why they're so short-lived and they also don't understand how they got on the mud whale and anything about their magic kind of thing. So what I particularly liked about this volume is that it gave us a history or a little bit of history of the earlier years of the mud whale of other countries and their view on the mud whale. We also had some new characters from a new place introduced in this one and we also found out the answer to one of the big questions that's been in this series. So four stars, really enjoyed it. I may, I don't know if I can, but if I can fit in volume six for Bacopolathon I may do that and get through the series a little bit quicker because it is quite a long one but aside from that that is pretty much it for this week's vlog because it is 8 p.m so there's no point me telling you what i'm going to pick up next i may as well save that for next week next week's vlog is going to be a short one it's only going to run from monday to friday i'm hoping to read two books off my bookopoly tbr in that time period because the bookopolathon is next weekend so there will be a separate vlog for that next week's vlog is going to go up on sunday and then bookopolathon will go up on tuesday on my normal vlog day i'm very excited for the bookopolathon vlog I'm hoping that I can read quite a bit, but um, we'll see how it goes because I also have to run the readathon as well, which is a challenge. I would have finished Children of the Whales earlier, but I had a nap. I can't lie. I napped from like four till six. And now I just really want to watch Hamilton again. Like I also want to read, but I kind of want to watch Hamilton and I also feel like I should work out because I haven't for a couple of days. I need to have a shower and wash my hair. So I don't know what I'm doing for the rest of the night, but I've had a pretty chill Sunday so far. I'm sorry that vlog 100 wasn't the big exciting vlog that you guys thought it might be be. Honestly, I just, I'm a pretty boring person, you know. I, I stay home, I work and I read. But hopefully I will find something exciting to bring you for vlog 104. I hope you've enjoyed this vlog if you made it this far. If you have, then please don't forget to like if you liked it and subscribe if you want to. And I will see you guys next week. Bye! Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you Go where nobody knows With guns hidden under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no